All right, hi everyone. My name's Chris. I work at Trousernize. We build a network assurance platform to provide deep and actionable visibility into any network. For that reason, it's absolutely crucial that we can understand what's going on with requests under our platform. So we started to look into distributed tracing, and for that, we used Istio and OpenTelemetry. And today, I wanted to share a few key insights that may help you if you're thinking about doing the same. OK, so let's imagine it's 2 AM. You run a web store, and suddenly your users can't check out. They're getting those dreaded 500s. Now, if you had no tracing at all, maybe you'd default to the logs and metrics like the old days. Let's say you've started tracing, and you've got the web store instrumented, but you don't have Istio. Then you start to see something like the left-hand side. So we can see that we've got something going wrong with the web store. We're not entirely sure what. Perhaps you're new to the team, and you don't even know that there's a checkout service. Um, Perhaps they're legacy services, and you're trying to work out what's going wrong. So let's say we've instrumented the web store. We haven't instrumented everything else, but we have all services on the Istio mesh. Then you can immediately see that you've got a checkout service and that there's something going wrong there, and perhaps you can focus your investigation there. So that's one area that we found Istio particularly helpful. We've got some big and critical targets, like our, the front door to our web application instrumented. And there's dozens of services underneath. Some of them are instrumented, some are not. But Istio can help point us in the right direction. So what do you need for this? So one thing you need to understand is, unfortunately, Istio is not psychic. And this will apply to any tracing solution that you're using. Um, any request coming into your system, as it passes through all the services, you're going to need to propagate context. That typically takes the form of HTTP headers. It's various formats there. And generally, that's going to involve extracting the, um, extracting the headers from inbound requests and then injecting them into outbound requests. But frankly, developer's time is better spent on feature work. So for that, we use the OpenTelemetry auto instrumentation, and that automatically propagates context from many common libraries and frameworks. We've instrumented about 80 plus initial services with the Java agent, and we've injected it with the operator, and we've barely changed a single line of code. But there was one challenge that we encountered with headers in the first phases. And that was that some piece of our infrastructure did not support that latest standard, the W3C headers. So again, OpenTelemetry and Istio can help you solve this. The only thing that needs to remain constant is the headers throughout the requests. So the OTEL collector can receive trace spans in many different formats, probably the formats that you rely on. And we configured Istio to use the Zipkin provider, which we use those B3 headers. And the OTEL Java agent and many of the SDKs have a propagators config option. So you can set that to use B3 headers, and they also propagate the W3C ones as well. So we did that, and then we get that end-to-end -end request flow, but we're sending spans in many different formats. So you can survey your infrastructure. Um, perhaps you have reliance on some older tracers, but you can still use OpenTelemetry, and Istio has many formats that you can use as well. So survey your infrastructure, work out which ones are appropriate for you, and then go ahead and configure it. OK, so in terms of config, um, we Googled around. We found various different ways to um, configure Istio tracing, but we did settle on the de facto way that you should do it now, which is the mesh config and the telemetry API. So in your mesh config, you'll define your extension providers in terms of which one, like OpenTelemetry, Zipkin, there's various formats. And then telemetry is where you pick which ones will default for each workload. And you can also do things at the namespace or workload level. So perhaps you want to roll out things on a a uh, gradual basis, you can do that. Um, or potentially, you want to disable spam reporting for particularly noisy services. So we did that for the hotel collector itself. Um, and then one thing to call out with the random sampling percentage, typically this is parent-based. So if you have any tracing happening before your mesh, Istio is just going to respect that decision. It's not going to change it. So this only really takes effect when uh, Istio is making, Istio receives requests for the first time. And there's no tracing headers there. OK, so one thing that will take a little bit of time to change is user habits. Um, we've got a run book, which is pretty much muscle memory to seasoned responders. Uh, it says check the logs. It also says check the traces now. But people will default to looking at the logs. And if you can put those trace IDs in the logs, you'll help people discover the traces exist and what's really happening under those requests. So that's quite easy to do with the Envoy access logs. And you should also put it into your other logs where possible as well. Otel Java Agent will help out with that as well. OK, so quick recap. Key message here is really enable it and then get iterating. Getting full end-to-end -end visibility across everything from day one 
will be quite tough, especially if you've got a lot of services. But you can get a head start with the OTO auto instrumentation. And if you need to mix and match tracing providers, you can. Just got to make sure those headers are the same throughout. Config, give a go with the a telemetry API. It should sort you out. I've linked a tutorial down there, which I found recently, which is really helpful. Um, so you can give that a go. And then don't forget, don't forget about this other observability signals. So add your trace IDs into the logs, and you'll help your users really discover what's going on under those requests. Another thing you can do is add exemplars to metrics, but unfortunately, I don't have time for that today. Thanks for listening, and if you have any feedback or questions, then please reach out. Cool. And we have just a few minutes for questions as well. If anybody has any, go ahead and raise your hand, and one of the two of us will, will get, meet you with a mic. I just want uh, you to share your experience on the sampling rate. So like, what's the sampling rate you have configured? And like, I, I'm assuming you are running on some cloud, like maybe Azure or AWS. So if you compare their inbuilt distributed tracing system, so like how you choose like whether I should go for the Istio, comparing the sampling rate and the cost, if we configure this and then put all the logs there and then their default logs cost. Okay, yeah. Um, so we're, we're still experimenting with sampling rate. Um, we really want to try out the tail sampling. Uh, we've not quite got there yet. I'm um, hoping to learn about, a bit more about that this week. Um, so we actually sample our staging environment where developers are testing and where they replicate problems at 100%, so they, they can definitely get that. And then our production by default is 1%, um, but we do configure that a bit higher on some workloads when we've been trying to debug some problems. Uh, we did find that generally there was a bit higher resource usage as you up the, the tracing rate. Um, but the, the, the long and short of it is you need to experiment quite a lot. Um, there's no one set answer for all your workloads. And the other thing you have to do is you have to really work out where the traces are starting, and then that's where you'll need to adjust it. So we have some things where like uh, the requests are coming in um, encrypted, so the trace is actually starting at the Hotel Java agent rather than Istio. Alrighty, any other? Great, awesome, thank you, Chris. Oh, great. Where do you keep your traces? Uh, so the question is, where do you keep your traces? Um, we tried various vendors. Uh, right now, we're storing them in Grafana Tempo open source. Um, how about retention? For how long do you retain, and how do you, uh, for example, deal with things like GDPR or PII information in traces? So we generally retain our traces for 14 days, and we generally find that's enough time to look back. Um, but we do recommend people to export the traces and save the file for postmortem documents and that sort of thing. Already okay. awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.